We got to keep this energy up. Yes. Because Steve is just going to wither like a little husk if we don't keep the energy <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. I am. I'm having a bad day today. <laughs> no, no, it's all a good day. So uh, we're going to get some feedback from our, our people watching to see what's going on. What did our numbers go up to? <laughs> we didn't get much of a We're at eight already. Oh, okay. Ten. Well done. <laughs> ten, ten, twelve, thirty, twenty. Anyhow. So, yes. This shop. What are, what are we going to talk about here? Let's just you know, whatever. Know. Let's sounds, working. Sounds, good. sounds working. It's perfect. Okay, cool. Let's, let's talk about these amazing things. I've been no. following you on social media. These Thank amazing you, sir. Amazing things. I don't know how you do it. How do you do it? You just, just make them out of nothing. It's just foam, man. I know, but <laughs> you know, I think that. Uh, and don't please don't take this wrong because your lovely wife earlier was telling me how much you enjoyed working at my studio. Yes, it is. But I don't think I ever actually truly valued you enough because I never <laughs> I never saw your sketches. Thank you, you sir. You know, you're a great <laughs> Until artist. now. <laughs> Until, <laughs> Until now that it's all over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 22 years later, he really values me. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I know. I give me your book back. I'll say to the best <laughs> fabricator. <laughs> No, Bill, Billy Bryan sure. can't make one of these. Billy Bryan could make, he'd make a giant inflatable one. <laughs> <laughs> plastic bags, it'd be brilliant. I tried to get him here, he couldn't, he couldn't make it. No. He's gluing plastic together today. Is he? That's what he says. Go figure, mm -hmm. 20 years later, still using garbage. <laughs> still garbage. Well, that's what, I mean, you know, I'm still using upholstery foam. So I started cutting when I was like 10 years old. And I had no idea that that was like a thing that people made shit out of. I did it because it was cheap. You know, yeah. I went to the upholstery store and give me some scraps. Here's some scraps, kid. No, but I really appreciate this technique because Thanks. it's not the, you know, the, it's not the standard way of doing the, 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 the Dick Smith, Stan Winston, Rick Baker way of doing it where you got to sculpt it and you over sculpt it and you mold it and you right. cast it and you paint it. And you know how that Billy Bryan plastic thing happened from Clyde Barker on, on Lord of Illusions. He said, Clyde said to me, he goes, I don't want to, I, I want this to be the most horrible image anybody's ever seen. I want right. it to be squirmy and black and dark and nauseating. I'm like, okay, good idea. Well, 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 first we'll take a life cast of the actor. We'll, we'll, we'll sculpt the suit. And he's like, no. You guys are always sculpting shit, and then you mold it, and then you <laughs> paint it, and it looks like it's it just, you know what? It's a, right. When I worked with Rob Bottin, the first time, one of, one of the first big movies I worked on was Humanoids from the Deep with Rob. Oh my and Margaret God. Prentice was painting the humanoid suits. Right. And I looked at him, and I said, why is she painting highlights and shadows on them? It's like, real? Creatures don't have highlights and shadows painted the on them. Yeah. It's just the light right. does it, right? right? And that that's kind of what Clive meant. He goes, let's let's just try something completely different. And a lot of British people do this, you know, the right. stuff Roger Dickens did for the original Aliens. Right, Amazing right. stuff because it doesn't follow that normal school. Right. And that's what I was appreciated at your shop. You pushed the artist. I mean, we, we always had a concept, a design. You drew it. We do it. As you always said, I remember. <laughs> I drew it. You do well, we it. All there's a team, you know. And it was. So, it was. It was yeah. a great team effort. But I mean, yeah. you would come up with a great concept that you approved and you liked, we and would it, you would show us that. Yeah. You converse on like right, of what course. the technique might be. First, the design. Make sure the design is something that we like, that is doable, and that was something that was Steve ingrained in me, and right. then that you know, in my early days, got to learn from everyone, and right. make sure that whatever we design and we present to the studio, director, producers, whatnot, that it's buildable. Right. So, you know, then having you there, or Bill and the team, you know, right. prototyping and trying different shapes and seeing what works, different materials, that kept it alive. That's what made and it really And that's what you always yeah. pushed, yeah. Uh, you know, coming down onto the floor, talking yeah. to us, and saying, this is the design, this is what we've got to get to, just get to this. Use well, whatever you can, use whatever you want, let's just get to this and make it cool. Back then, the exploration that we, as a studio, yeah. had, I feel is, is lost. You know, it's, yeah. it's different. It's, it's well, a different, I always, it's different I, industry now. I, it yeah, is a very different then, industry. I we always, got to explore with well, no I, one really over our heads. I would budget you know? a ton of money for research and development. Right? Yeah. And it was a playground. That That's why we yeah. came up with all that cool stuff. Right. But now the budgets and the time frames have been collapsed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can't do it. You just got to go A, B, C. You can't go A to X because what if that doesn't work? Right, right. But we did that all the time because that was the fun part to yeah. me. The fun part of the exploration it was also the failures that then eventually became successes oh, yeah. down the line and other projects. Exactly, yeah. You know, Remember when I screwed up this thing? Yeah. I think I can use it on this. It looks no, really but, great. But that, that was... That that's why it was never comfortable at the studio because we as a collective were always like, okay, 
why can't we just do what we just did on this and it worked? Right. We were always pushing the envelope and that, that all stemmed with you and also the great team that we had. You know, yep. Leon was the same way, you know, uh, you're the same way, Bill was the same way, playing with materials, coming up with like different techniques. And unfortunately, then other studios heard about that and they ended up doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not even start. Well, yeah. it's, it's yeah. 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 Thing. No, and no, then no, I started going to other studios and just going, well, we developed this stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's why we can do it in two weeks now. Because it's like, I, we figured I it out. Because I paid for it. Yeah, yeah. 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 you paid for it. But a lot of people felt like I didn't have a job at my own studio. But my job was to make you guys yeah. be better than no, you could you be on your own. Yeah. I would push you and push you and push you and give you the time and give you the money and, and give you the opportunity to do things that you might not have thought Yeah, I, I, I'll say, I, I loved working at uh, all the shops I've worked at. I mean, my boss is bald and great. You know, I worked at k and I loved all those guys. Worked at Legacy, those guys, you know, like uh, John Beekler, you know, for, doesn't matter. The lowest shop to the highest shop, whatever. And whoever the highest shop is, whatever. But working for you, yeah, you were that coach that just rallied the team and... We're making something new. It's uh, different. If we didn't have COVID, I could give you a big hug. Oh, I give a big slappy kiss right there. Uh, no, no, but it's true. Yeah. You know, because as artists, we can sometimes dive into a certain funnel, and yeah. then you know, you come in that y you haven't been completely a part of that, and have an objective eye and say, okay, you know what? I think this is not working. We got to try this, and then go, and then come back in like yeah. another three, four days, and mm -hmm. say, okay, well. You know, and then and then we start to really kind yeah, of you phone in, yeah. But you've got the the artist eye. That artist well, we all it. we all had a, a, a mutual sense of respect, and because there's nothing, I you know, God knows my history of being fired on all these huge shows. You're the director, you're the producer. I don't care. I don't care what you think. I'm going to do it my way. Right. But there's nothing worse than to come in and tell an artist to change it. Right. But you guys let me do that. Well, well, I mean, you know, when you're the boss, yeah, you're paying yeah. us, so of course I got to change it. But, the but, producers but, were paying me, and I hiring, still wouldn't do it. But they're own. hiring you. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. So they want your vision. So of course you have to direct us. It's like, in the end, it's like you know, because you're working with Constantine to begin with, and it's like, okay, we're going to design this together, and then the team has to build it. But in the end of the day, you're still responsible for it. So of course you. You get to tell us, like, no, it's got to be a little smaller, a little bigger, the color of this or texture or whatever. I felt we had a good balance. Uh, certain shows, you know, I had weaknesses in where you had strengths, and then vice versa on other shows. Mm -hmm. And other shows, you'd be fighting, you know, you wanted to do this big elaborate thing. I'm like, well, Steve, I think on this one we might want to, you know, tame it down a bit. You know, and it was always that sort of fight. But that's what kept that energy and that sort of creativity always flowing. And the amount of talent. The amount of talent that came through that shop, mm -hmm. I mean, I... I, I Every I, one of them is yeah. an Oscar winner now, yeah. except me. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know about my name, yeah. Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I mean, and, and I've oftentimes said this, you know, uh, you, that's why I love to do these sort of like um, interviews and just kind of go back to memory you know, uh, back on the history of where I started, because that foundation is a big part of why I'm successful in my career today. If I didn't have that foundation with the artists from the practical world to really kind of hone in, I, I don't, you know, one big part of why I get hired a lot even these days with the sort of all the digital aspect to design and execution is the fact that the mentality is still coming from a place of practicality, that something can look functional, right. even with design and, and, and materials and whatnot. I know you and I talked about a couple of times, there was one, it was a wearable project that we ended up not doing, but you had this great oh, at my place? At your place, yeah, at Edge. Oh man, we did and a lot of werewolf movies that didn't happen. Oh, <laughs> everybody wanted to make oh, a werewolf. The greatest werewolf design's <laughs> never done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a question over. I think we're gonna get a lot with each guest, but uh, what's your advice to young artists? What should they have in their portfolio and how can they get into the industry? And is that for me, that question? It's for everybody. Everybody. Oh, Lord. Well, when you were pulling people into the shop, I mean, like, you, you hired me. What did you want to see when, you know, you see somebody lay down a book? Well, quite simply, um, I, 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 the easy answer is that don't pour blood on somebody's face. Don't pour blood on somebody. That doesn't do anything for me. It's an easy, easy reaction. Do a broad range of things. And these days with silicone and all of the information that's out there that's, you know, online, which we didn't have when we started, yeah. that there are so many places like Odd Studio is one of my favorite, favorite companies. Um, and you, you, you can learn literally the Stan Winston School of Character Arts. You can learn so, so much more easily than you could then back then. But um, a broad range of things. And I think a, a, a true character design, 
a fantasy character will get me going a lot quicker than a gore makeup. Right. Uh, yeah. And also a broad range of things. That's the thing. Um, coming from, you know, uh, as far as, it's funny because we, we oftentimes talk about this um, with some other artists. And I have friends, Jared Morantz, um, yeah. Ian Joyner, and some other uh, amazing concept artists as well uh, that have taught. And so their whole thing is to have a certain sort of whatever makes you passionate and have that one thing in the portfolio that that says this is what I do overall yeah we're good at like you know m maybe creature design and then you know there's mech design and then there's keyframe art you know what is your passion what is that one thing that that you're gonna stay up all night and do you want your portfolio to kind of you know emulate that show range is I think it's a big deal you you need to be able to go into this type of world and then also kind of go into something a bit more grounded and realistic um, <clears throat> that's kind of the... You're saying you don't like this? You, it, it's so <laughs> funny. The, the, only the cartoon so stuff. <laughs> I'll sit the rest of the day like this. And then. I remember when Scooby-Doo came around. Yeah. The very, the first one. And Steve comes to me and he's like, hey, you know, I know you don't like to do cartoony stuff, but you know, this is, this is, we can have fun with this. I'm like, no, 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 no. And we were working on like really horrific, like, I, you know, stuff from right. uh, the the thing, uh, you know, uh, Fantastic Four, we were working on, like, uh, just many other, just more of, back then, I was more grounded in realism and whatnot, yeah. horror films and all that. I'm like, cartoony, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> so, and I remember then, you're like, okay, you know, we passed on it. But then when the second one came around, the second one came right. around. It was such a fun project. It was. It such was. a broad it range was. of stuff. And God damn it, it pisses yeah. me off that they sent half of our designs to Canada yeah. and we didn't get even credit for it. No. <laughs> they just took them. No, they took your designs yeah. and sent them up north. Because when I went up north on set, and yeah. I remember doing fittings and stuff like that. We had our Black Knight and our uh, Evil Mask figure and things like that. And there's all of your designs up on the wall. And I was like, yeah! Because like, I wanted to build that. I wanted to build that. I wanted I still yeah, we did. We built prototypes of a bunch yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just posted the one picture of me in the uh, the prototype of the... I saw that, actually. That's, the what, pirate. Reminded, that's what reminded me. Yeah, yeah actually. The yeah. pirate, but then the minor 49er and oh, the Ozark yeah. Witch. And, but that was yeah. the thing, is that they weren't cartoony. You took, you took what? The Creeper. Which we Creepers. did build the Creeper, and we built so the cool. zombie. And, you know, that's the thing, is that you took the original Scooby-Doo cartoon design and, and just real. brought it into the real world. And they were creepy and fun and... Like that engine. creeper design is so, so cool. Because that was part makeup and part animatronic, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no. no. Or did we try just had a no, huge no. foam job. I, yeah. I, I remember trying. I thought we were going to try like an extended maybe, animatronic maybe thing did. or something like that. We were just doing got that on other things. Like, yeah. like actually, like the thing. Like yeah. Oh, that's right. That was a yeah. hybrid. That was yeah. a yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that, what's that? We got away 55 pounds. No, it's amazing that I can pick up a bronze like this. Yeah. You've been working out. I've been working out. Yeah. So, yeah. Why don't you talk about this guy a little bit? Well, the, the, I mean, from almost when I first started at your shop, it, Fantastic Four was always coming and going. It's like, okay, oh, we're back on, we're back now, we're now. We're, we worked on a Fantastic Four yeah. KMB. Yeah, no, no, even way before. And they pulled the plug on that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, so for I felt that we got a you know a good time to really kind of explore this character and some of the other characters like Doctor Doom. And, uh, oh, others. that Doom stuff was, yeah, so was gonna be so cool. cool. It was probably too cool. <laughs> and so, but yeah, you know, like uh, John Weldy had done some beautiful maquettes as well, you know, of other designs. And then, um, and then I, I, back then I wanted to get more into sculpting and I was still, I mean, it was like my third or fourth year maybe there, maybe even sooner yeah. than that. And, um, you were on the floor taking my job on this one. I was happy to let you have it. <laughs> you were traveling on other shows. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, and, and that was a great dynamic is that you, we had this trust, you know, that when you were gone, you know, we had a great team and we were all there even working on weekends and whatnot coming in. And so, yeah, I was really jazzed to work on the thing because it's so, something, a character like this, you can only really dream about. And okay, but hang on, let me just interrupt for a second. Yeah. The way really that, crushing my leg the way that worked, <laughs> the way that worked um, is that the producers, as they do sometimes, they hire three companies. Actually, they wanted to go out to three companies uh, ADI, Mike Elizaldi, and myself, and they say, there's 50 grand, do whatever you can, take a month, and we will just judge it, and we'll give it to the best man. Right. 
And oh my God, I was so pleased that ADI, ADI said, fuck you. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Because we had played that same game on Cat in the Hat. We right, won that one. Diplomatic or ADI. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, 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 Rick was working, doing something. And, uh, yeah. Rick was working on it, but Mike and he didn't get along with Mike. Right. But so they, they came around, and, and so we remember how hard we worked on it? We did stuff we did. that kills me. We had all individual rocks that would yeah. slide over yeah, each yeah. other. We did mechanical brows with a prosthetic makeup. But the thing Leon came up with, Leon Lederick, is that we literally made separate rocks and right. and spandexed and velcroed them and For, elastic them together. Yeah. So. The idea is that they would slide over each exactly. other. You put a grinding sound. Yeah. We even shot a short film. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, you guys did. So th this was two iterations. Yo, oh, yeah, the yeah. first time was this, the and first, then yeah. we did three I, different versions. Actually, I went, I went yeah. out because of pocket. Because then it was a couple years later when because this went away. Yeah. 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 This project totally went away. We did this. Oh God, my brain is Swiss cheese. Really? No, no. We had this project, so it was this yeah. design. Um, and I built the foam fab, yeah. just a prototype suit for like size and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it could be like this and yep. I wore that, I was on risers No, and it was huge, it was kind of like the Black Knight, right? It was very, it was like yeah, the before we did, here. so I think the Black Knight came after that yeah. or yeah. something like that. But then, so we did that, we had a cool Dr. Doom arm that, uh, who was that, Bernie? Liquid filled? Bernie yeah, liquid Eichels, filled yeah. Bernie Eichels and this great Iridescent, swirling Iridescent metal, swirling like, stuff, yeah. you know, another Dr. Doom head and then we went into that meeting at the pitch meeting at uh, Fox mm -hmm. and all the production artwork all over the place and then the yeah. models for the sets mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and yeah. I, they, uh, Fernando and I were down the hallway in another room. You guys were all looking at you know this, this artwork and everything like that and they were kind of holding me back in my silly foam fab suit and had me walk down a hallway. And I walked on the hallway of that thing and just kind of like stomping. And it was just foam suit. It wasn't painted. It wasn't. I but it showed the, the, the way you could change the, the silhouette. Human anatomy yeah, into something it had the huge. silhouette. And we had the idea or, you know, that my arms would come through the ribs right. and then go out there. And they were just going to have green screen. And they were going to paint right. that out so you could get that big movement. Well, we tried to and give them the true thing. And then yeah. ultimately what happened is it came down to money because we did the short film. We did all these variations. Yeah. I went way out of pocket on it. I was really excited about it. And uh, what happened, actually, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, what's his name? Avi Arad, the guy that owns yeah. Marvel. Yeah. He comes into the studio, a beautiful, beautiful Flower Street facility, right? Right. And uh, we show him the short film. We show him all these amazing things we've clearly spent at least double what they gave us on right. And he wouldn't even look at the stuff, he just looks around at the studio and he goes, this is where money go, not on screen. <laughs> and turned on his heels, stormed out, but he stopped for just a second at the receptionist's desk and said, please to give a uh, name of uh, architecture man. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> All he cared about, and then they, they, because I Mike, got some money Mike, I want to Mike, put into. Listen, Mike, I love you, Mike Elizondi, I love you, but they gave our designs to Mike. Sure. And Mike made them uh, cheaper. It's not yeah. simple. That was a smaller shop, not as flashy. So we got a couple of questions. Fuck them. Um, we're having too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of we're gonna go on two hours. Mike Elizondi's got yeah, questions. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, this is Mike. Mike says, how much money did they give? <laughs> The first was what keeps you guys excited to be working in the industry. Um, yeah. But then rolling off the Fantastic Four stuff a little bit, they said, is there behind the scenes footage of what you guys made? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Will, will you sure. release it? The, the short film is amazing. I think it's on YouTube somewhere. I think it's gotta be. Okay. Yeah. It's on you YouTube guys somewhere. It's like a three-minute film, and it's so cool. You can go to my that stuff going on, <laughs> and having projects taken away and the money really. What what keeps you excited about working in the industry and, and moving forward? I decline. Godstein, <laughs> 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 yeah. would you like to answer this? It's uh, it's like a drug, for, you know. When I say it, and I and I say it in a, in a good in a good sense, it's a, I get obsessed with this stuff. I, I'm still a kid about it, I'm, you know. And it's funny because as I get older, I would have thought I would have slowed down. I'm actually doing more. And so um, the characters that I mean, you know, right now currently I'm working. At Marvel, this is Dev uh, on other upcoming Marvel projects and oh, um, can you tell us tell us in great detail about them? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like working on these characters, it, it, it it's a dream come true, you know. And it, again, today I'm still it's still very alive for me, even though I'm not. Unfortunately, I'm not part of that practical world, even though I'm so gracious and grateful that I had that in my career because. That's the foundation, um, and um, 
now transitioning into more of digital sort of design and sculpting and 3D versus doing an actual clay maquette, even though I, I still love it. But it, it's it's it, it's still it's a fun job. I mean, how, how can you not like working on like the Thing or Silver Surfer? These are characters that I grew up with, you know, reading comics and watching, you know, uh, cartoons about as a kid. And so to be able to now be a part of that sort of like design process and see the outcome, and now with Marvel and, and, and how well they're doing all the digital uh, work and storytelling, it, it's really, you, it, it's just a, it's a All right, picture. that's enough, Constantine. Yeah. I do want to answer. <laughs> uh, I, uh, for me, uh, it's kind of come full circle for me. Where, Wait, is uh, this where you announce you're reopening a shop? <laughs> Well, well, it's, it's, it's come full circle because when I first started, you know, I started like when I was 12 or 13, yeah. you know, and I did everything. I became the best sculptor. I thought I could be the best mold maker, the best engineer, mm -hmm. the best painter, the best guy that ran a business and offered you guys these wonderful opportunities. And then I got really, really tired of it as witnessed by my fleeing the country to Costa Rica and living in a treehouse with hookers and monkeys <laughs> for a year. <laughs> But now, I'll, 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 occasionally, I'll occasionally do a small job, but what makes me excited about it now is I get my hands dirty. I actually do the work. Right. Yeah. And I didn't do the work when you guys are at my place. Right. I just said, bigger, you idiots. Hire you fools. <laughs> <laughs> but now, it's just like that does actually excite me. Right. But, you know, I'm fucking almost 61 years old, and you, you start losing your energy at some point. So I don't work constantly, but when I do get a job, um, I do it. It, not just by myself, but I, right. I really get into it. Right. Being on set, which is used, I hated. Everybody in the industry loves being on set. I never could understand that. <clears throat> now I actually like being on there's set. A, there's a certain amount. I mean, I always love being on set. I mean, it's tiring. And the older you get, the more tiring it is to be. It's like I talked to Alan Scott waiting, about this there? yesterday. It's <laughs> a lot of waiting around. Yeah. It's not glamorous. It's yeah. a lot of waiting around. You're either really cold or really hot, and you're disgusting and dirty and all that kind of stuff. It's done. You know, but then you look around and it's like the C stands, the flags, the camera, the you know, the bustle, you know, like it's like I'm making a movie. Oh, and it's just like being just like hanging out with you guys today. Um, when you're on set, everybody there is incredibly talented. Yeah. And why is that not the, the best party you could ever go to? And right? for the most part everybody knows what they're doing too. Yeah. They can they can hustle, they can hop on it, you know, whatever from you know, grips and gaffers and this and that. And it's just, it's all, it's it's dance. It's a good group it's of people. I mean, yeah. we're all insane, but we're insane in the same way. Yeah, you know? we're insane for movies. So that, I mean, we've talked about this with almost everybody. I mean, did that start, when did I start with you? Where did it start with, with that, I, I need to make this, I need to be in film, I need to... When I came out of the womb. Yeah. I was one second old. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I gotta make, I gotta... I've always, from my, my first memories, is I wanted to make stuff. <clears throat> the first the first things, and I don't know why, but I, I just had this incredible desire <clears throat> to take, when I was in kindergarten, I'd take coffee cans and put construction on paper on them and make life-size totem poles. Right. You know, I, I did, did everything I can to make things. And then when did course, that translate to film? Well, of course, makeup about, effects and a, little, a little bit later, I started watching all the horror, the, the Hammer and the Universal films. Right. And that was it for me. Sure. It's like, oh my God, I have to, somebody's got to do that stuff. Why right. not me? Right, right. Yeah. There, someone's getting paid to do that. Yeah. You figured that out. Yeah. I think that's and then I met Rick Baker. And that, you know, that was like the, right. the, the true start because he sure. introduced me to Botine and Cannon and Dick Smith and all And you're that. not from LA area. You're from, no, I'm from Houston. You're from Houston. Okay. Yeah. So you had to make that move. I did. When I was 18, the minute I got out of high school, I loaded up my car, lit a joint, and hit the road. <laughs> to Los Angeles. I know, and I knocked on Rick Baker's door, and he's like, who the hell are you? Are you? Oh, you've got you joints. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come on in. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you, I mean, as we talked about that yesterday, like Alan Scott, you know, talking about knocking on doors. You can't knock on doors anymore. It's like, you know, they won't get opened. They're all yeah. fogged. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, no, 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 this isn't a makeup effect shop here. Go away. Yeah. It's all digital but you, these days. you moved from... You know, how'd you jump in? I mean, just well, I got into film actually a lot later. You know, a lot of guys grew up with this, um, the, the you know, like the Universal uh, monsters, Frankenstein, Werewolf Man, you right. know, all that. I I didn't. I got into that uh, during my high school years. Right. And before I even got into film and, and being interested in that, I mean, I always dabbled in collecting comics. Okay. But um, a part of me was uh, studying to be an architect. And so I was. I did the same. Yeah, I didn't in, know. Did yeah. we talk about that? And I just forgot. Yeah, I think so. 
It's all the joints. It's all the joints. He is almost 61. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Swiss cheese holes in my brain. I do remember the first design you showed me, which was a living sandwich puppet you did for yeah. Rick Lazzarini. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rick was That's really how we started started our relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fellas, is plastic bag technology still used in the industry? I really enjoyed tutorials, Stephen Bell. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> it's been spread all over the planet actually at this point because of that Stan Winston School of That's what happens when you do a tutorial for the Stan Winston School. <laughs> I know. And I call up Bill. I'm like, hey, Bill, you want to do this uh, this thing? And he goes, you're going to take my job. I'm like, it's not like that. you got to share the wealth. And he was very happy to do it. And, and now uh, it, people all over the world are using that technique Every, simply because of that one tutorial. Yeah. Wow. Every time I went to a different shop after Edge, after your shop, Alan Scott, other little shops, say, like, can a... Uh, can you do that plastic bag thing that Bill Bryan does? And for a while, I was really resisting because I went, "That's a, that's a Bill and Steve thing," yeah. and I was really resistant to do it until you know Alan was like, "We we got to do something." It's a thing that looks like that, and I was like, "That's the plastic bag thing." I, I <laughs> don't want to do that. You. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, that's sweet of you." You know, like, <laughs> it I, doesn't I, matter. I, it doesn't I was <laughs> really I was resistant, but then. You know, I say, like, uh, okay, and I'll well, do Dick it. Well, Smith smells, and we'll change you know, it up. Shared, yeah. shared his knowledge. And that's, that's the thing, too, about, you know, like, yeah, obviously, we all heard, you know, the Dick Smith stories where it was like, yeah, call me up. I'm going to tell you how I did this, or I'm going to tell you how I did that, and here's the formula for this, and, you know, so it, it is. I mean, it's just fucking garbage bags, for God's sake. <laughs> no, it, 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 yeah. Well, I, 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 I use dry cleaner bags, so I, I really improved it. I use dry cleaner bags. You know, yeah. you can do it with any kind of bag. I mean, it's almost, but, you know, it's it's such a creative thing. I mean, you have to, you really do a lot of playing around with it. Because, I mean, when I first started doing it with Bill over it. there. I can't do it. As witnessed by this this tutorial, Matt was insisting, Matt Winston was insisting, he's like, you got to get your hands down there, you got to do it. And I'm like, I don't know how to do it. He's like, Bill's like, just do it like this. Take the soldering iron. And I burned all the way through the fucking table. I was like, I, I, I honestly can't do this. It's it's fun. I mean, when Bill Bryan and I did the uh, the kaiju build, and it was like dueling kaijus with the Stan Winston. Oh, the Stan Winston, yeah. Yeah, so Bill had one table, I had another table, and I, I remember we, we had taken a break, and I was kind of running out of things to show people because we were getting closer and closer to the end, and Matt Winston's like, just show something. Like, uh, he was make, make a bladder. Can you do a bladder? And it's like, I don't know if people use bladders anymore. I'll make a bladder. Like, a, And I went over to Bill, I said, Bill, we haven't done any like inflated plastic bag thing. Do you mind if I do that as a tutorial and just show? Because we're not going to use it. You just said you wouldn't even do no, it for, no. for this legacy. Was way after, they, this was way after that. But Bill and was, now you're trying to steal his thunder? This was after he had done it for really Stan Winston. Really after. Yeah. No one no, no, no. Yeah. Nobody would remember. No, but I actually asked Bill standing there, and I said, they want me to do I said, you. he goes, no, 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 go do it. Go do it like that. So camera switched over to me from Bill. And I, you know, I gave him credit. I said, this is Bill's, Bill's thing, but I'm going to show you guys. And blah, blah, Came blah. from Clive Barker, actually. There you go. Yeah. Originally, I'll tell you the worst scenario that happened. It happened constantly now that with my series of books, Rubberhead. By the way, guys, Dark inkbooks.com you can still pre-order volume two don't ask me why it's taking so long to get oh, out right now taking so long. there's two the publishers joints, fighting over it monkeys and joints and yeah. uh, said that that was steve's new shop name bookers and monkeys <laughs> <laughs> what was i saying i forgot it's i got, a, flowers, I got yeah. excited <laughs> oh, the, war, the war of the worlds the war of the World worlds of where we built this incredibly inflatable B billy Bryan thing it was so it had mechanical tank it was so amazing stayed up yeah. all night before i had to go show it it's been worked on that oh it stands i'm sorry <laughs> 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 I was in, to Spielberg's credit, I was in Peru. I, I, we went and we shot this thing. I'd been up all night. We, we, sh we, didn't sh we showed him a live test of this huge, incredible pod, 15 points of movement. Best plastic thing I think we ever made, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a stanza. And they said, I, I said, look, I'm, I'm going I'm to go to Peru. I've got, I planned this already. I got three weeks going through the mountains, doing ayahuasca, huachuma, with shamans. And yeah. I got to well, go to Peru. Really, the trip yeah. is already planned. And the producer's like, I'll tell you what, the closest you're going to get to Peru is we'll walk up a steep hill and I'll buy you a drink. Huh. And I went and showed him that thing. And I just said, I'm going to the airport right now. And that's why they ripped it out from under me. Took it over to stands, <laughs> and you guys couldn't figure out how to do it without me, from from what I heard, because they're not in the movie. Because it, it got downplayed so much, and I was I was really bummed with the stuff. That it was like the coolest thing we ever made. Yeah, I never saw pictures of it. I, I they didn't show us any of that. So, so if they had footage, they had pictures of it. We never saw it. 
And it, it, oh, shit. No, I, I never saw it. Because here's what I ended up doing on that show at Sam Winston Studio. Is that it all just turned into red weed. Sorry, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Stan. <laughs> um, but it, it just turned into red weed. Yeah. We just red weed everywhere. So what I basically did, we did fiber optic, silicone, sculpted red weed that you shove fiber optics in. And I made nernies. Yeah. Red nernies a total for waste a couple of, your, of months. Total waste of your talent. And then we did pods. Well, Bill, I heard, because I was in Peru. I was yeah. off on you know, meeting God yeah. in the mountains and uh, with shamans. But uh, I heard Bill did go over there. It wasn't Bill on it? I don't think so. No? No. I don't, I Swiss do not, cheese, ladies I, and gentlemen. I don't remember Swiss Bill cheese. being on that. You even said something. It's like, let's try to remember the movies we did. I think you yeah, said that online. I did say even worked on them. Uh, or if we even worked on them, but that was the thing. We went to set, we had these pods, and there was little aliens in the pods, because mm -hmm. there was a whole subplot. And so the, 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 the whole idea was that they're getting the humans, we've always been here, they brought us here, we're food for the aliens, and so we're spreading our blood all over, and they're feeding these alien pods, that they're growing aliens on the planet. Yeah. That was the whole subplot. So when we had done this at Stan's, it was like all these vacuform and silicone small pods like this. We had them all laid out on the set there and everything. And Steven Spielberg came by and he looked at it and he nodded and he goes, this is amazing. This is really cool. And they were all like animatronic. You could see them moving around inside and stuff. He walked off set 15 minutes later, one of the producers comes back and says, yeah, Steven loves this stuff. Take all of it out. This subplot is going to lengthen the movie by like 15 minutes and we're never going to hit our release date. I think what the so producer, we, we the, I'm uh, quite certain he was named Colin, Colin Cardboard is my name for him. <laughs> Emotionless <laughs> motherfucker. I'm quite certain he meant Stephen doesn't like these, get them off my set. Who knows? But <laughs> yeah, I, we were told they had to hit their date and this big subplot that they were planning for. Isn't it funny to hear the true or just different versions of oh, stories. Oh, it's amazing how many different versions there are. Because, you know, you, you get something from a producer. I get something from, you know, a, a first AD or second AD that comes and says, strike all of this. And Just just to kind of, like, follow, I know we got to go, but the, the one of the worst for me was the, the, one of the worst projects that we lost, which I felt we came up, we had done on prior projects with Clive, is, uh, and I hate to say this, but the movie Constantine. We did a lot oh. of design work. I mean, the Steve, confusing part Steve, about Steve, it. Steve brought up like that chopped head. We were going to use that on a Clive Barker film. Yeah. And you brought it, to, and we were doing. Yeah, what was that design? artist, the photographer's name? Oh, uh, Joe Peter Whitkin. See, because we ripped him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve. Yeah, no, and so yeah, when when that project came around, we did all this design work. Three weeks later, it's at stands. Stuff. And, and they exactly. jumped our designs. Oh, no, it happened, it happened in that designer. robot movie. Yeah. I can't well, even tell you. Read my books, kids. Yeah. It's like basically Bubble Boy. Bubble Boy. Bubble Bubble Boy. Boy. Bubble Boy. Just read my books. It's all in there. Everyone but took ADI's our designs. Like, really, there's nice about it. Yeah. No, they, <laughs> well, no. And it, I mean, it wasn't like ADI rip you off or yeah. Stan's rip you off. Was, that Bubble Boy is our Bubble oh, Boy. Are you kidding? I know. You made the guy. You and I. We went to like Kmart and other places. And it was all supposed to be found things. So we built a guy inside the outfit. I think part of the problem with us losing that job is I went to Bali. I said, hey, look, here's the design. Yeah, I'm going so to Bali. Bali. We kept losing these jobs because you couldn't stop traveling. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> Monkeys is there footage of your War of the Worlds stuff? Uh, yes. I'm sure there's you shot Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of photos, a lot of footage. Um, I have a question. Is that volume three? three? roll by because I like the organic nature of everything. <laughs> yeah, we won't shut up. <laughs> um, I don't know anyone in the industry. What would be a great way to network and maybe apply for apprenticeships? Go reach out shoot. yeah reach out i mean honestly i mean because just me i left legacy only like around 14 15 months ago and i mean but that's the thing they all of these shops whether it be michael zaldi shop you know spectrum motion or legacy effects or KB effects group reach out to them and they're going to yeah. tell you, you we've got a website adi they've got a website like that email you know Is send you social media Social media too. I mean, like tag and all that kind of stuff because that's what everybody's doing. Like at this person or at this or, I mean, Legacy Effects just or a, a Legacy Studio just uh, reached out on Instagram and said, "Hey, we want to see people's new work." You know. And I know we keep saying there's no physical knocking on doors anymore, but I feel like it's it's become digital. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You should put a site together. Art Station is a good place that you okay. can put work on, and it, it's. I mean, you can build a site within literally ten minutes. 
and then you can start to email that out to and the digital yeah. nature of it. Now. Yeah, like you can go to the Smack Pro Motion Instagram page yeah. from right. Wisconsin and sure, say, from anywhere. Yeah. I'm in Wisconsin. Here's my work. How do I? Yeah, get in? from Bali, like, from Peru. For, yeah, you from, could do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From places monkey I travel. To. Monkeys yeah. are doing yeah. it right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 jokes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's the way to do it. But just and, and don't stop reaching out. There was a, there was a young guy that reached out to me on Instagram recently. It's like, how do I do this? Do you have apprenticeships? And I was like, no, no, no. I'm just in my small shop here. But here's some, you know, if this is what you're doing, yeah. reach out to these people. He he wrote me back like a couple weeks later. Hey, I just moved into state. They hired me. Yeah. The place that you told me to go and look at, they hired me. And so be persistent. You know. Well, if, if not for this uh, pandemic, there's been more work that I've ever seen in my entire lifetime now because yeah. of all the streaming services. It's just yeah. so much content needed. It's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Right now, a lot right of people now, are working. Netflix and Hulu. Not necessarily and right now. How long has it been since you, what have you been doing during the pandemic? Yeah. No, I mean, we, we got to work on some great projects alone and my wife and I, and, and I mean, we had a couple people in here. All I get to say, I got to say this yesterday, is I worked on a top secret project and I was told I could say who the person was that I worked for, which was uh, Neil Blomkamp. And it was a really quick four week, you know, we put together all these designs and sketches and things like that. And it was, a, was that, <laughs> no, hey, I designed for that. Uh, no. <laughs> but, you know, I'm it, joking. It, I'm was joking. A, it was a fast, Stop it. <laughs> it was a fast and furious build, but I got to say, I, I worked with him and he was great. So we did that, but we've done a couple small features and we've gotten just some, you know, people that are interested in buying my Artwork. <laughs> oh, that's cool, like the, the Mike yeah. Hill, what Mike does. Yeah, it's, it's similar to that. I mean, well, he's not working with Guillermo, he's making his figures and he sells right. them. And that's, you know, I'm hoping somebody might look at my Metal and Meat or my Frankenstein. And, but it's about putting yourself out there. I mean, you know, in, in, in answer to that question as well, it's like, I'm intimidated. I'm not, you know, I never wow. looked at myself. I can illustrate, but as a, as a fine artist or anything like that, but it's like, it's intimidating to put your artwork out there. It's the only way anybody's going to see it. Is you yeah. put your artwork out there and, yeah. and that, ask that, that Frankenstein is outrageous. I, I, love it. I do have a question for you. I mean, it's incredible. Shoot. But uh, why did you punch the entire head of hair? You could have used a Sears bedspread. I'm a moron. Because <laughs> 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 I started punching and that was the idea. I was going to hand lay the whole thing and I was going to do that in like, you know, two hours, you know, just hand lay the hair. It's, uh, but I started punching. I'm going to punch this and then I'll hand lay the guy and then I just didn't stop. Yeah. And I had nothing how else long, to do. How long did it? Well, that's the real answer. Four days. Four days, yeah. Yeah, four days. Wow. Steve, but Andy it was is uh, curious whatever happened to Nightbreed. Nightbreed? It got made. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> He says, I know you brought Michael Broom on, but was constantly involved as well. Nightbreed? No, 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 no. Is that Andy Mogger? Yeah. Is it? Uh, no. Oh, maybe. Oh. Were they trying oh. to remake it? No, I think. Wait, say the question Midnight again. Midnight Meat Train. We worked on Midnight Meat Train. I was train. curious whatever happened to Nightbreed. Midnight Meat Train we almost did. I was going to draw yeah. it, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he had like a series of like eight films that he wanted to do yeah. one per year. The Books of Blood projects, yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. we didn't work Once on that. Once more, old men talking about things they can't remember. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> Andy, stop it. I'm, I'm including man. myself. Yeah, Andy's a young anybody. guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, good, good to hear from you, though, Andy. Alex, Alex Diaz, in the, late, uh, in the late 80s, I went to see Steve to show my work. He dragged me out without looking at my portfolio. Hundreds of movies later, thank you for making, uh, thank you for making those other workshops. What? <laughs> I dr I dragged him out without looking at his work. He dragged me out without looking at my portfolio. <laughs> Thank you for making me you, go to other shops. Well, you you're very welcome. <laughs> well, I I got. I remember you. I I was sending out resumes because I I had just gotten laid off at K and B, and just started sending out resumes like crazy. And I get a call from Bob Newton mm -hmm. the day after I sent out resumes. So I mean, it went from Woodland Hills to. That's the Burning thing. In Hang a on. Second. A a whoever that guy was, Andy? Or no, not Andy. Alex. Alex. Uh, Bob looked at the resumes first. <laughs> That's right. It Bob was, vetted them you, before I would look at them. Pass it on to Bob. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, it was Bob, Bob. Newton. It was Bob yeah, so, Newton. So Bob Newton calls me. I get on, the, like, uh, hey, this is Bob Newton from uh, uh, Steve Johnson's shop. And he goes, hold on a second. Steve's on the phone. I was like, okay. Like, uh, you jump on the phone. Hey, hey, I want you over here this afternoon. Like, uh, I want to look at your book. And I was like, oh, like I'm, I, it was, it was yeah. very close <laughs> like that. I'm sure there was a Pellegrino in yeah. one hand and a cigarette in the other. 
But uh, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm really busy right now. I mean, you're too busy for me? And I said, I'm, I'm working. I'm casting up some stuff for everybody. Okay, I respect that. Come in tomorrow. And I, I was like, all right. And I came watching my book and all that kind of stuff. And you, you kind of flip through. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. Yep, like that. And he goes, so you're working at K&B, huh? And I said, yeah, I was working at K&B. I want you to tell me all the what shit is, you know about K&B. <laughs> hang on one second. What is this... Uh, impersonation of me. It was, it's, 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 it's your energy. Everyone does it. It's your energy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows you. I can't. You do gotta it. look at footage of yourself. Like, yeah, like no. So, but it's like you said. I want you to tell me all the dirt on K and B. And I said, tell you what, if you hire me, I'll tell you anything you want to know. And you said, start on Monday. <laughs> For the love of God. <laughs> hey, I never told any dirt. There's no dirt to tell. There's I love dirt. working at K and B. Yeah. All right, so I think we got to wrap up, guys. Well, it's actually we haven't. It's only one. We're just warming. It's all. It's funny. It's right when I, I'm really up. thirsty, though. Is it warm? Yeah, I, I drank it all up. We're gonna. Hey, we're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna say goodbye. I gotta get Steve another water. But uh, here we go. The secret. I, re I remember walking into the shop, and I had interviewed, and I had just worked for like two, three weeks with Rick. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. And Rick was kind enough to give me like um, studios where I can send my my uh, a resume out. Uh -huh. I we sent it to minutes, Steve's okay. shop and like five other shops. ADI, blah blah blah. Steve's shop, Bob was the first one, in in back then on my messages. So I'm like, okay, I schedule, and it was on a Tuesday. So I go to Steve's shop as soon as I pull up. I'm like, this is gonna be my home. And next thing it's you know, beautiful studio. It's beautiful. Within five minutes, you hired me. You're what like, was your architect's name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I walk in and he's like, I thought you would have been like 50 years old. Ask, ask, ask Avi Arad. <laughs> Look at his place. It's beautiful. <laughs> we built that place from the ground yeah, up. It was just four walls. Beautiful right? downtown Burbank. No, we built, we put we did tilt down concrete. Thing, we yeah. built, I bought a piece of dirt. Yeah. And uh, it, was on, know, it was on an old soap factory, so it was really hard to get all the permits. It's yeah. like this 100-year-old soap factory. Oh, boy. So I don't know if you guys are growing a third eye yet. No, no, no I, I feel <laughs> fine. <Yeah. laughs> you seize every now and again. I lost my hair, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What's it was like, it, it was, it was like, on straight there? And it's like, it was like Andy Warhol's factory. No, it was a beautiful shot. It was so the, decadent, but the art that came out of it made it kind of okay for the yeah. decadence. We did great projects. I mean, the, the Scooby-Doo, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I mean, when I was there and Good the stuff times. I worked on. I mean, even Monkey Bone, for as silly as that film was, I mean, that stuff was... Oh, my God, we did so many cool so characters. Cool. Mark Siegel says hi to Steve. Mark, Steve say! Steve How you doing? Who are watching. Wow. Oh, and, uh, oh, and Brian Wilson. Mark, uh... Mark Brian Wilson, greetings from Ghostbusters. Oh, Mark, hey, how are you? Yeah, two of the old Ghostbusters team. I'm, I'm still annoyed that Alex is upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Just Tell me. <laughs> Why'd you read that question? <laughs> Comes with the territory. Because <laughs> David's a shit stirrer. <laughs> at first, it read like it was going to go well. It sounded like dragged me into the shop and gave me a job. So I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then I read more of it. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, well. can't want them all. Yeah, you can. <laughs> no, I had great times at your shop. It was a beautiful space. And great times. Uh, I still dream. You're a great boss. So thank you so much. I dream so often about being back in a in an effects facility, like running my own. If facility. only you could open one up. <sighs> I have to say, since we're ending uh, or finishing, Steve was a great boss. I mean, you allowed us to really just be artists and yeah. explore. When uh, I've worked at other shops, it wasn't quite like that. It was a different dynamic. But because your history with other effects artists, having the security and then also passing on a lot of knowledge onto myself, you know, it you really gave us uh, a nice playground to really yeah. explore. And I felt we did amazing I, work. In I felt time. respected. Thank as you an artist. so much. Yeah. You know, it was like it just in in so much trust from you. You know, it was just, you know, I I, I never I, got I, yelled at. I, I never was, got, you know, just like I would. There are some. I, I actually uh, there were. I got violent. Times you I got wanted violent. To get yelled at. No, no, not yeah. at you. <laughs> I got because I felt the respect was mutual. But <clears throat> if you're gonna miss a deadline, if you're gonna fuck something up that could have been avoided, mm -hmm. I actually got so violent. I have been known to throw chairs at people. 
But what I do is I don't want to hurt them. I just throw it near miss. Right? <laughs> just, just to make the you point. You just want to scare a lot of somebody. Just to make the point. I <laughs> let somebody know that I can pick up a chair and throw yeah. it. <laughs> Mark, Mark Siegel commiserates as well. We love working uh, with Siegel and Ghostbusters. Most fun I ever had in my career. Oh, Mark, thank you so much. There That's so go. sweet of you to say. I love working with you, too. And Mark Brian Wilson as well. Andy as well had a great time on the Slipknot build. Oh, the Slipknot one. Let's not talk about what happened in Vegas on that. <laughs> he oh. says and, thanks for not killing him. Andy knows the story. We tried. What happened to <laughs> <my> best? <laughs> well, Manson was there. I stayed. My buddy Chad, his band was there. Slipknot was there. Yeah. And we were working with 12 gorgeous <laughs> naked girls we made these cocoons for. Just do the math. This is the <laughs> same story you've told every year. For, <laughs> there's always 12 <laughs> naked girls and makeup and a... Oh my god, it was a nightmare. Different film set. (laughs) (laughs) Oh well, this has been great, guys. Thank you, Uh, Ted. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Now I gotta drive all the way across the valley. (laughs) I'm sorry. You're more sober right now, though, right? <laughs> and keep keep an eye out too, Constantine. You've got a new book that you're going to be coming out with. A yeah, book, I, I just did a quick little prototype thingy. I've uh, been working on this off and on for like a a good year or so, and um, trying to finish it up. Uh, still a lot to do, but yeah. Um, hopefully, <laughs> that'll be coming out sometime early next year. Good job, and don't forget Raw Red Two uh, Dark Ink. Publishing.com. And you, by the way, we didn't talk about this, but I'll, I'll talk about it very briefly. Now, this is the one thing I've been doing through the pandemic that's been making me actually feel artistically satisfied is we're making a Rubberhead documentary. We've got oh, almost nice. two hours already edited. Oh, my God. It's so fun. If you think this was a good conversation, <laughs> it's really cool. And we go out to everybody I've worked with before, and we've just got incredible, incredible locations. It's a really good documentary. Nick Great. Taylor, uh, just he, he read Rubberhead. And he said, hey, I want to make a documentary on you. And I thought he was nice. kidding. I didn't know. And I go, well, you can PayPal me $10,000. And, he, and he's like, instantly comes back to me. He goes, well, I'd rather send it to you through bank transfer. And I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we've been shooting for like a year and a half. And That's great. Uh, it's turning out so good. I'm really pleased with it. Excellent. Look forward to it. Yeah. Definitely look forward yeah. to that. And, yeah, again, thank you, Ted. This, You're welcome. It's always fun to go back to yeah. this world again. I know. Yeah. It's like we never left. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Let's I build something. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Our memories are gone. Yeah. That's the only difference. No, no we'll help you out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got a few pictures left. <laughs> All, All right, right, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. We'll so be back much. in just a little bit. Good seeing you. Come on back. Here.